Hello, Sir Survivor here. And today we're going to look at 30 specific skills to help us survive an apocalyptic scenario, or at least make life a little more comfortable in some of these situations. Now, I'm not focusing on our basic skill sets here. I'm not talking about self-defense, making fire, building shelter. I'm talking about specific skills that will help and will make you more valuable to your group or make a member of your group more valuable to you and also give you the ability and give you the opportunity for better barter items on down the line. So these are skills that are not an absolute necessity, but these are skills that can definitely help you out as time goes by. But first, a word from our sponsors. In reality, shipwreck treasure doesn't just show up every day, does it? But it just did. Noble Gold has some of the $20 Liberty Gold coins hauled to the surface from the famous sinking of the SS Central America. They've been on the seabed since the 1800s. Imagine how cool it is to own one of these and hold it in your hand. You can reserve yours today by calling 877-646-5347. They won't be around for long, that's for sure. To find out more, go to the website www.noblegoldinvestments or call 877-646-5347. Again, www.noblegoldinvestments or 877-646-5347. 30 skills for surviving the apocalypse. There are links in the description below that will take you through the steps of learning each one of these skills individually. Uh, most of these are pretty easy to learn. Most of them are pretty simple processes, but if we don't think about learning them and don't look into learning them, then we just simply don't do it. Some of this people already have, some of it they may not have, but hopefully the list will give someone some ideas and maybe help somebody out out there. Number one, candle making. If you have the ability to make candles, then you not only have a good barter item, but you have the ability to illuminate your own home. And this is a very simple process with links below. This will also increase your value with your group and give you an excellent barter item. Number two, making soap from scratch. Being able to make soap from scratch will be a very beneficial thing just for the hygiene purposes alone. And that's not to mention the barter opportunities that it does open up with other groups on down the road. Number three, canning. Canning is one of those skills that some people may consider a necessity. And I think that in the long term it's going to be a necessity, but I think at this point in time not enough people know how to do it. Um, I'm not a canning expert myself. And it's a skill that I would like to learn a little bit more about because it would make me more valuable in the future, but it would also extend my lifetime by extending my food supply through the harsh months that I'm not able to grow anything. Number four, smoking, drying meat. Having the ability to make jerky and to make other smoked or dried meats to preserve them is going to be great for stretching your food out, but it's also going to be excellent because it does give you, once again, more barter power. Number five, identifying edible and medicinal plants. This is a skill that a lot of people don't have. And it's one of those skills that it does take a minute to develop. It's not like I'm gonna read a book right now and then I'm gonna walk away and be able to identify every plant in the nation. It's just not that way. A lot of times we have to carry around some of this uh, material with us to be able to identify these plants. But being able to identify edible and medicinal plants or herbs in your general area is gonna be a huge factor in not just survival, but quality of life, especially on the medicinal side. Number six, sewing, knitting, or quilting. Sewing speaks for itself. Clothes are gonna rip, bags are gonna rip, things are gonna tear, and having the ability to repair that is, is gonna pay off in the long run. But past the sewing, we have the knitting and the quilting. Being able to make quilts, being able to knit, and being able to make these types of craft work will not only make someone valuable because in those winter months, we're gonna need all the quilting we can get, but it's gonna give you some excellent barter items once again. Number seven, beekeeping. Beekeeping is one of those things that it does take a little time to get into, but if you have this skill and if you're able to get a setup up and running, then you're going to have a steady supply of honey, which is good on both the nutritional and the medicinal side of things. Number eight, making alcohol. Being able to produce drinking alcohol is a skill that not everyone has. As a matter of fact, most don't uh, off the top of their head to be able to produce it from scratch. And having the ability to be able to do this will give you a very powerful barter tool. Number nine, 
making black powder. At some point in time, if the event stretches out long enough, people are going to run out of ammunition for their weapons. And a lot of people may resort back to bows, to swords, to knives, to things like that. And when the ammo's gone, there's not much you can do. But black powder is made easily. The recipe is below. And by making black powder, then this is a renewable resource that we can manufacture and we can use as a means of defense or as a means of hunting. So making black powder would be a very valuable, valuable skill to have. Number 10, being able to tie knots, tying good, strong, solid knots. And there are a lot of different types of knots that can be tied. And this is just something that you have to learn. Uh, sit down and tie one a few times and you've got it. It's a pretty easy process. And there are a lot of different knots that work in a lot of different situations. And you would be surprised at how much this helps you when you are going to secure things, when you're towing something, when you're pulling something, when you're putting two ropes together, that kind of thing. So it's a very beneficial skill to have. Number 11, harvesting seeds for future crops. Now, we mentioned in other videos about having seeds and about planting crops and getting them to grow, but someone without a green thumb, someone who isn't very experienced in this, isn't going to know the correct way to harvest the seeds from the plant and the correct way of getting them to grow immediately. Being able to harvest the correct seeds and use them properly to grow next season's crops is going to be more than important. It's going to be an absolute necessity. Number 12, making homemade remedies. And this goes back to the medicinal plants. Someone who's adept at medicinal plants and homemade remedies like this can be very beneficial to a group and, and to themselves because being able to treat minor wounds, minor injuries, minor ailments using homemade remedies is going to save a lot of lives in the long term. Number 13, making cheese. Being able to produce cheese, which is not the simplest of processes, but it is a process and it's one if you learn, imagine how popular you will be at dinner time when you have a block of cheese and no one else does. Building a raised bed. Not everywhere we attempt to plant will have soil that's hospitable to what we're trying to grow. Being able to build a raised bed that you can grow at least a small amount of crops in, then this is going to benefit you because in some situations it's not going to be able to grow you know, just in the ground and you're going to have to use compost and other types of materials to get it to grow in a raised bed. Which brings us to number 15, composting. Those who are familiar with the skill, if you will, of composting, know that it's a valuable art and it's something that will make the difference in some situations of crops growing and crops not growing. Number 16, making homemade laundry soap. There's a difference between the soap we use in our body and the soap we use in our laundry detergent. And being able to make laundry detergent or laundry soap to keep our clothes cleaner, to make them last longer, is going to be a very handy skill to have. It's not an absolute necessary skill that would determine life or death, but it would definitely give you good barter items if you could manufacture any amount of this. Determining weather or meteorology. Now, some people are very skilled at being able to tell what the weather is going to be like. And being one of those people that recognizes the factors, recognizes the things that they should see or should not see, that help them determine, help them understand if inclement weather is moving in or not, then having that ability is, is going to be very beneficial. Number 18. If you're in a group, a large group, this is going to be a very valuable tool. And this is simply for quality of life, and that's the ability to make music. Whether that be playing your guitar, playing drums, singing, whatever it is, people will need entertainment, especially if the person we mentioned up there on number eight making alcohol has done his job, then the music will be very entertaining. And once again, it's not a life-saving skill, but it is a skill that will make quality of life much better and allow people to take their minds off things for a few minutes. Number 19, making glue. Being able to make adhesive out of materials that we find in a forest environment is a very important skill and it's actually very easy to do. Number 20, making lubricant. Lubricant for your metal parts and for other devices, some of your leather, it can be made out of the fat of a lot of animals, especially out of bear fat. And this can be used to apply to your weapons, although it's not the first choice for anyone, but using for your firearms or using for other things to lubricate them and to prevent too much friction, you know, causing damage. Number 21, making rope. If you have the ability, the skill, the knowledge to make rope 
from just the minimal components, then this is going to be extremely valuable. Because until we're in a survival situation, until you're out in the woods and you're using this rope, a lot of people don't realize how much rope, how much line you'll use in setting up a camp, setting up one properly, especially when you start talking about perimeter defenses and other things. You're going to need a lot of rope, and having the ability to make it will make you that much more valuable to your group. Understanding how to make a greenhouse. Being able to build a greenhouse, at least a small one, and implement it successfully is a very valuable skill. And it's a skill that I think a lot of people can figure out, but a lot of people already have the skill. And having the knowledge is gonna be, is gonna be very important. Building a stealth fire. One of the most common names for a stealth fire, you'll hear, call, you'll hear it called a Dakota fire hole. But if you're out away from the group and you're in a wilderness or any type of setting and you do not want to be detected by your campfire, then you can build a stealth fire. And a stealth fire is actually built in the ground. It will require digging a hole. And the goal of this is to keep the flames below the surface of the ground so that they do not illuminate the area and make you visible from a very long ways away. Stealth fires are very handy and it pays to know how to build one. Number 24, making a scarecrow. Now, I don't think that this would be a very complicated process, but it's something a lot of people may not think of. And that's if you're going to grow crops, even if they're in raised beds or even if you're just growing a small amount of them, you're going to want something out there to scare off the you know, birds and other wildlife. And a scarecrow works fairly well at that. Just don't leave it in the same place all the time. You have to move this around quite a bit. Number 25, brick making. Being able to make bricks out of the natural elements that you find in your general area, being able to bake these and make a hard, solid brick that you can actually build out of will be extremely valuable. Tanning hides. The hides of the animals that we hunt will be important for multiple reasons because leather is an excellent tool to make clothing out of. It's an excellent tool to make pouches, bags, and other things out of. So we don't wanna waste anything. Being able to use every part of any animal that you might hunt, and that includes its hide, is going to be very important. Number 27, and a lot of people may not agree with this, but speaking Spanish. Um, for someone who has more than one language that they speak, this is going to give them a benefit because when we think about the grid going down, I mean, just being realistic, Spanish is a very popular language in the United States right now and a lot of people speak it and some people only speak Spanish. So having the ability to speak this will just open up a few more doors on down the line. Number 28, something that a lot of people have not done and that's changing a tire without machinery. I'm talking about taking the tire itself off the rim and putting another tire back on the rim and then getting it inflated. This process is strenuous, it's hard to do, but it can be done and it's something that people should learn to do because we won't have the machinery in the future and if we do still have a vehicle that somehow we have fuel for the last thing we want to do is abandon the vehicle because of a flat tire if we could access a tire and change it on our own then that would help us out a lot in the long run number 29 Working with clay or pottery, being able to make pottery may not seem like a huge benefit, but in the beginning, especially of a rebuilding phase, then being able to make your own storage containers, your own containers, your own devices like this, that's going to allow you to carry more goods like more water, more food and things like that. Being able to do this is just going to open that many more doors when you're constructing some type of area for you and your group. And number 30, Climbing with a footlock. A footlock is a device that assists in climbing a rope. And this device, it looks on TV like it's very easy to use, but it can be a little more difficult if you've never used one before. But being able to use one of these, this is going to enable you to access areas that you mother otherwise may not have been able to access. Being able to climb with a footlock is a very, very handy skill. And of course, though, you have to have the footlock device to be able to do so. These were 30 skills that I just wanted to point out. Um, a, a lot of them I know that people have thought about, but I'm hoping that some of them, some people may not have, so that, you know, maybe give you some ideas about things to read up on, because the majority of these, we can basically learn just by reading some documents and maybe practicing it once or twice. 
So it's really easy to obtain most of these skills that we talked about, or at least have the recipes for like the, the soap, the glue, and things like that. If I have this documented somewhere, then basically I'll always have that skill. And uh, hopefully the information will help out. Thanks a lot for watching. God bless. And for now, Sear Survivor, out.